They'll never keep these lives up where you get the whole live and they can go back and sit up there and say because every YouTuber that starts to grow has an enemy. And one thing I learned, like, like for example, that faggot ass nigga Wax Dog and all the rest of them, Sonetta, those dudes save every video that I do. They timestamp where I said something that goes against YouTube's guideline and then they wait the mass flag. To the point to where that when they took my monetization, all of my videos was on private where I couldn't even get to them because that's how Leading set it up. YouTube started attacking those videos while it was private, age restricting. When I seen that, I deleted every video that I had on YouTube because they was looking. Then here's the here's the thing. Academics told me, he said, "Listen, Haas, they're gonna keep flagging you." So that you can't post on YouTube no more. As soon as you come out of a YouTube guideline strike, they're going to put you back in another one. I heard them. I ain't give a fuck. They took my monetization. Then I said, yo, how the fuck did academics know this? Because he was having a conversation with the elite. He's one of the elite. Academics is way at least. Academics has a minimum of $10 million. I think he's worth. So it. he, yeah, he's and he's waste work, but he he is. His collection of cars and all that is worth more than that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> on social media. Yeah, you gotta understand this on here, bro. Yo, you gotta, you, you gotta understand me, me myself. My, my small, my smallest checks I was getting off of YouTube was probably eighteen thousand dollars a month for making videos. Yeah, I'm in the wrong business, my brother. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the wrong business. That's wow. why it's like, but, but it's like, see, this is what you got to understand, right? When I was just sitting up there talking about empowering the people and waking the people up, they kept my lump, my numbers low. So then I sat back and I started realizing the wickedness that was going on in the music industry. There's a thing where the music industry has this thing in Hollywood where they like to humiliate and make black people go through a humiliation ritual. So when I started breaking down celebrity gossip, especially the big stories, I was saying things that everybody else wouldn't say, so it made my page skyrocket. Then the checks started being different because now they want you to be entertained by entertainers. But then when these YouTubers and dudes like WAC100 and all the rest of these guys decided to say, hey, this nigga's really blowing us up and waking the people up. Then they started reevaluating me like, hold up, something ain't right with this nigga. We got to deal with him. And then things started changing. My house got raided. All types of stuff. Like, yeah, they, they was, I had to deal with a lot of stuff. People calling my, see, when, when you become a YouTuber, right, or you become somebody that's active on the internet, you're not a drug dealer. So the only way for them to get you is to sit up there and call with a fake call. He got a bomb in his house. He got guns in his house. Now you're a felon, you're done. They run up in your house. They search your house. They find something that ain't supposed to be in there. Well, they had probable calls because somebody said you had a bomb. And when you have calls like that, the police have to come out. So what YouTubers, what they started was this thing is where they, where they basically own prank call or the, the government to call themselves to give them a reason to go in your house. And this is where they're gonna catch you at. Oh, squatting. All the, yeah, squatting. All the all the, all the, all the best all the best YouTubers them been through it already. The best of the ones, the ones that really really wake people up, they've been through it. That's crazy. Man. And, and sometimes other YouTubers that do it to you just for the hell of it. While you live, they get your house raided just so it could be on camera. It's dangerous. The jealousy. Is what they call is the YouTube streets. <laughs> I named That's it crazy, that because. Man. And it is sad because I inspired so many people to come to YouTube. And it's like, how y'all skip out on the message? I hate seeing the nigga shit. Especially coming from grown men knowing that there's children watching us. Yeah, that's crazy. Give them something to, yeah, give them something to look up to. There's so many dope things you can make videos about. I see what YouTube doing to my number. My numbers is crazy. How that live I just got off. I had forty thousand people. It ended. It showed me in my analytics. I had forty thousand people on that live. 
You go back to that live right now, and you and you look at that live. It's showing that I only got eleven thousand views on that live. After all this time, impossible. When I was in, when I was in there, you you was up to five k. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, but so when the live bag. ended, when the live ended, it said I had nine point four thousand on YouTube. But in my analytics, while I was ending the live. I screenshotted it. It shows you how many people viewed your live. I had 40,000 people that were my live ended on, but it's only showing 11,000 right now still. And then when you look, right, they got the live still showing as up and coming with zero views. Explain that. The live ended already. That been ended. <laughs> You've been in here for Explain me. that. Y'all see this here right there right now. Like, how do you explain that? How the do you explain that it's showing... Yeah, they shadow banning me. All they're doing is making me feel special. And they won't let me delete it. Look, I can't delete it because it's it's it's, it's sending mixed signals. That's it, it's like up you gonna tell me a, a, a billion dollar corporation like YouTube can't fix that? 